Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today. And appreciate you taking some time out of your day uh, to spend some time with us. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, Equips is a web-based application, and we work with financial institutions across the country um, to provide one process and one place for you to help you manage your equipment um, with any service issues that you might have. A lot, I'm Janelle Davis. I'm our Client Solutions Manager here at Equips. Along with me on the call today is Denise Cox. She is our Director of Strategic Alliances and Kara Guzzi, one of our Senior Account Advisors here. Um, and then today, what we're planning to talk to you about is um, ways that you can improve vendor relationships. So touching on um, the items listed here, and this is based on information that we've learned from relationships that we've had with vendors and our experience, along with what we've heard from our customers. Um, and we'll go through these different topics. We will touch base with you at the end about how Equips can help in these areas. And then we will also have an opportunity to um, provide you with some resources at the end of, of our call. Also definitely ask questions anytime through the chat feature. I'll be managing that for us today. So if you have any questions along the way, feel free. We can talk about those together. Um, and last but not least, we will be offering uh, some, give some giveaways today during our, our presentation. So there'll be two poll questions and um, we will be picking at random some winners for a $25 Amazon gift card. So we're excited to have you join us today. Great, thanks Janelle. So this first section um, that we're gonna cover is really around what, sh what you should know before selecting a provider. It starts with understanding the provider's tech density. They might have 20 technicians in your footprint. However, what level of experience do those techs have? Do the majority say service security equipment and you are looking for them to support ATMs? What is the average tenure of those techs? This speaks volume as to the experience and the company itself. Lastly, understand the tech to equipment ratio. Is there one tech to say 100 ITMs or one tech to 20? Just so you understand the complete tech coverage picture. Next, in case of tech turnover, it is really important to understand technician training. With the staff shortages that everybody is experiencing right now, how long does it take to get a new tech proficient? When I was on the vendor side, it was say about six months on average for what a simple cash dispense ATM, not an ITM, which now you can expect that to be around 12 months or longer with the advancement that we're seeing in technology. Vendors that have in-house training programs this really gives them what I would say is an advantage, having both the ability to have hands-on and online education for their techs. This is invaluable with the ever-changing technology and functionality that we are seeing across all equipment on our branches today. Also, do they have the ability to send those techs direct to the OEM for training? I think that's a real important piece as well. Next, next once the techs are trained and in the field, what does that tier two and three support look like? When a tech is in the field and runs across something they haven't seen or they can't seem to drive to the root cause problem, what type of support system do they have to reach what I say is the super tech to avoid additional trips or downtime? Just clearly understand that escalation path and what to expect when this does happen. Lastly, and probably what I think is the most important, is how are techs measured? Fix it right the first time is one example. Address the issue at hand, but then take the time to perform preventative actions to avoid a future problem or that repeat call that we see all too often, right? When they leave, the fault comes back in. Response time, how quick can I get to that call? Resolve time, how quick can I close or complete the call? Those two, I really call like touch and go. Um, number of calls, how many calls can I get done in a day? So why is this important? You can see one method truly aligns with the goal of the FI, which is fix it right the first time so the problem doesn't repeat and I don't experience downtime. With that said, response time is still very important as 
if the tech shows up, fix it right the first time, but it takes them four days, obviously response time is important. An example of that would be um, an ATM continues to come in for a cash jam. Vendor that is measured by time, they will clear that jam and leave. Fix it right the first time, we'll clear the jam and determine what caused the jam. Sensor, belt, bad cash. So it doesn't shortly recur right after they leave. Kara, I believe you have a story to share about your experience with the loss of a super tech when you were at the credit union. I do. Thank you so much, Denise. Yes. Um, so having um, experience for over 25 years in financial industries, I do have one that really resonates with me in regards to what Denise was just speaking about. Um, I was working with uh, one of my service providers and we did have this super tech. He was fantastic. He knew the machines inside and out. I, I knew he would be able to take care of us. Unfortunately, he fell ill and he had to retire early. Unbeknownst to me, I didn't realize that the other technicians in the area were not um, even close to the as much knowledge, you know, have, have as much knowledge as he did in regards to the machines. We almost felt like we knew more than they did, and it was not a very good experience for us. So we found that it was very important for us to actually ask those questions up front when working with a service provider who is in the area, what are what is their experience, and what other options do we have if something were to come up. In this case, I was actually able to go to Equips because we were an Equips customer and they were able to find me a provider and get someone in and within a matter of a few days, the issue was resolved. So I was very thankful for that. Um, but it did teach us that we really needed to build those relationships, which we then of course did in the future. That's great, Kara, thanks. So let's move along to understanding now parts availability. How many local stocking facilities does your provider have in your footprint and where is their central stock located? This will give you an idea of the likelihood of same day fix if there is a local stocking facility by your branches or if most parts are coming in from a central location, say outside of the state. Just like text, how are those parts measured? What is the fill rate that that provider strives for? You will never see 100% what I would say is on-demand fill rate. When you think about vandalism or unpredictable repairs, no vendor can stock 100% of those parts. If they say they do, I'd be leery. Um, a good local fill rate for what I would call as most commonly used parts would be 80%. Less common parts, you're going to see those more around the 60%. So example would be, if a vendor strives for a 50% fill rate, that would be one out of two repairs that would require a part you would see local at a stocking facility or on the text truck. So it's really important to understand that parts component. The next piece is understand that OEM relationship as we talked prior with training. This comes to be very important when you need additional software support or a deep dive diagnostics by that OEM. Doesn't mean a non-OEM provider can't support the equipment. We see great performance by non-OEM providers, but just be aware that this might cause delays in the area of support. It really comes down to setting clear expectations. I've saw many of you say it and have visibility into it. Um, many contracts have a service level agreement outlined in them, but again, how will that be measured? response time, resolve time. And another big component of that is, how is that based? Is it based on response time per call or resolve time? Or is it averaged across all the calls for that month? Just clearly understand what that SLA truly means in your agreement. Call history, this goes to visibility, right? What type of visibility will you have into your service calls? And when will you receive that information? Is it on demand? Is it monthly? Is it quarterly? How will you receive that from your provider? Next is chronic management. What is the criteria that defines chronic piece of equipment? It really should be benchmarked on industry standards and usage for that piece of equipment and clearly defined to you up front. If a chronic piece of equipment is identified, what is the process to get to that root cause resolution. You know, when things are going well, it's great, but when something isn't, how are we gonna drive to that root cause? And what is what I would say is the get well plan? 
Um, preventative maintenance, this is a big one. Is preventative maintenance scheduled or proactive based on data? When is it going to be performed? Are you going to do it at a service call when my machine's down? Or are you going to take the machine down on a scheduled basis? With PMs, it's really about what I would say is putting logic behind them. A piece of equipment that does, say, 5,000 transactions a month versus one that does 500 logically tells you it might need a PM more frequently to ensure that peak performance. PMs done on a scheduled basis do not take that into account. It's more of just a checkbox. Yes, you wanted quarterly PMs, checked it, we did it. But there's no logic behind it. Kara, I believe you have a story as well on chronic, um, a chronic issue that you had experienced. Absolutely, I sure do. So thank you, Denise. In regards to um, an ATM, so our ATM at our main location, uh, we had an anti-skimming issue with it. And it started right before Thanksgiving, which of course we all know is a very busy time. Um, people are gonna want cash. We've got people that might be going out and doing things. It's a holiday. And the provider came in, um, applied a fix to it. Everything seemed okay. Within the next week, it was down again. And this happened all the way through the month of December. And once we got through the holidays, through um, Christmas and New Year's, we, we didn't know what to do at this point in time. Um, and we Unfortunately, when we went back to the provider, they didn't either. So once again, I actually went to Equips and said, what do I do? Because it was fixed and fixed and replaced. And what do we do? And again, we were able to get someone else in who was able to actually not only reset the sensitivity of the machine, but actually do a deep dive in regards to that unit. Um, so it, again, this was another learning experience for myself, as well as all of the staff at the financial, is that we, we really have um, the ability to step in right away to review the items, what's chronic, because by that point it was it was so far gone, we really needed to regroup. Um, but it also taught us too, how we really wanna view chronic issues when it comes to all of our equipment. Um, like Denise alluded to as well, preventative maintenance. We made sure we had preventative maintenance done annually on our teller cash recyclers and our self-service coin sorters as well. Because again, that way we were hoping to ensure that our equipment would continue to be up and running for our customers and members. How Equips can help with those areas, especially with that having call history, since that was the number one um, area where you did not have the most visibility. Our web-based app, which we have some screenshots here for you, does provide that one process and one place and all of that visibility uh, that you don't have right now when you're placing requests for service that you're experiencing with your service providers. And it really is the most effective and efficient way to have that clear communication between yourself, equips, and the service provider, because you get to see all of the calls when they're placed, any updates that are happening with them through the, the web-based application. And this can be both for the any service issues that you're managing with your service providers externally that you currently work with, or with any that you're managing internally. So should you have any needs for uh, service that you're routing internally to somebody to manage uh, before you would get a service provider involved, those can all be handled through our web app as well. And um, we would love the opportunity to share uh, some of our, um, share a demo with you in the future. Um, I don't think that we really have time to go through that with us uh, today, but um, the recap for, for our time today is what to know about your service provider, understanding coverage, understanding parts availability, what to know about part stacking and setting clear expectations and understanding performance metrics. So these will all be resources that will be available to you after we wrap up today. We will send you the link to the recording as well as some additional links to this information. Um, and then for any of you who are interested in a demo and uh, did not, uh, were not able to, and even those who did win today, <laughs> can still go ahead and register with us. We'll include a link to our Calendly um, appointment scheduler so that we can schedule a brief time with you to talk about how we can give you some more of that insight and uh, visibility into the call history. Um, and so if you schedule that demo with us in the, next, in the month of February, uh, you can also get an Amazon gift card. So we'd love to schedule some time with you to talk more about how Equips can help uh, in these areas. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you spending some time with us this afternoon.